Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're giving you an MS Excel tip on planning your accounts receivable collections. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. How long is it going to take you to collect your accounts receivable? Many industries, many businesses know exactly <clears throat> what it should take, right? Most of us, about 30 days is when we expect to collect. Some of us sooner. But some industries, we know it's going to take longer. Construction, for example. Oftentimes, the turnaround time on the job is going to be such a long period of time that when we bill somebody, we may not expect to collect the money right away. We may expect that it's going to take 30, 60, 90, 120 days even to collect the money. So I want to show you a quick, easy way to plan for that, especially if you're doing any kind of cash flow projections, because it's important for projecting cash flow to know when you reasonably expect to collect your accounts receivable. So in QuickBooks, we come into reports, we go to customers and receivables, and we want to run an AR aging detail. This is a great report because it gives you the name of the customers in complete detail. It gives you the parent name and the job name separated by a colon. That helps you so that you have one concise field that you can use. You can sort by customer and, and you know it, it really helps you just kind of uh, work with the information a lot better as opposed to running a report like open invoices which doesn't really give you that. It gives you it in a hierarchical structure which doesn't help when I'm trying to analyze data. So let's export this to Excel and we're going to set up our options here. The main thing is we want, we want to make sure the headers go on screen so we know what we're looking at. I like to uncheck the fonts, that's a personal preference. All the rest of this is really just personal preferences. Let's export that, and then let's see what we can do with this once we've got it in Excel. Now, I want to clean this up a little bit. I always like to put an extra space between the report headers and the data headers. And then it's going to give it to us in sections, current 1 to 30, 31 to 60, and so on. So we want to get rid of all that so that we have one concise list of invoices. come down here and then I just want to get rid of this border formatting here and on the page layout I want to get rid of these dotted lines so I come over here to width and I set it to one page let's get rid of this column now I'm ready to set up my timeline you always want the first of the month and you always want to start from January even if you're well past January because if you're going to use this table again copy and paste it or what have you then you have a complete years layout so that it's very easy to work with so now that I have this, I want to extend this out for the year. Now there's a quick way to do this. We're going to write a formula that I learned from my friend Tom called the date formula. Tom Uritis, he's got a great book here. It's called Excel VBA. Get it. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, I believe. It's Excel VBA, the 24-hour training. It comes with a DVD. It's got great video lessons. Definitely, definitely pick up that book. He taught me how to write this formula on Twitter, actually. We're going to take the date and we want to put in the year, month, and day that we want for each month, which is going to be based on the previous month. So I want the year of the previous month. Then I want the month taken from the previous one. And I want to add one to that. And then I want the day from the previous one. And it gives me my February. Now I can copy and paste this out. Control C. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That gets me out to December. Let's double click these uh, <coughs> column widths. And now let's format this to make it a little more functional in terms of reading. Because again, the formatting may not may seem trivial to you, but it shouldn't because it goes a long way to making your stuff easy to read. So we want to come over here to our numbers within the format cells dialog, custom, Date, notice an M is for month, D is for day, Y is for year. I want to be able to read this. I don't want to look at numbers when I'm looking at the dates. If I put in three M's, notice in the sample, it gives me the date in letter format. And then give me the double digit year. Click OK. Control Home gets me to the home screen. Let's make this whole thing a little prettier, a little nicer on the eyes. We'll give it some shading. Control on the number one to format these cells. I go to my fill tab, fill effects. Let's set a multicolor format to make our headers really stand out and look pretty. 
Then let's go to the font, and we want a nice white font to go against that dark background. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Make sure that we're formatted here actually for date or for some kind of number all the way out. And now we're really to, we're almost ready to start planning. Let's say here is going to be the total accounts receivable. Actually, this is going to be the total collections, total what we expect to collect. Come over here and let's format this for a total. Uh, cell styles, total. Now we make this no fill. We can make the font like a dark blue. That way this really stands out as a total. Now here's the trick. We're going to sum up each of these columns. <clears throat> and now what I want to be able to do is come in here and say, okay, and ignore the dates. Remember this was a sample company filing QuickBooks, so the years are going to be a little funky. But let's say we build this in February of this year, and let's say we're in February now. And we know that there's a 90-day turnover. Just go out, or, and really, that's that's March for all intents. Of February 29th, we're into March already. So let's say one, two, three. Because you always want to be conservative. In this case, being conservative means we're going to expect to collect it at the latest possible time. We're going to plan the expected collection at the latest time that we really expect to. That's conservative. So now let's get let's assume both February invoices. Then both uh, February 29th invoices are going to be collected in June, right? Got to widen up that column to see the total. So this is what we expect to collect in June, not the accounts receivable balance, but what we're actually going to take in. Now let's go to uh, the next one. Let's say this is billed last August. We hope to collect this next month. Why is it late? Right? And let's say we hold the same assumption true for everything else that was billed if these are dates uh, you know, from the end of last year. So we expect to collect 20,000 in March, 20, 000, uh, or 14,000 in June. Now let's look at how we would figure our actual accounts receivable balance, what we expect that to be. Let's say that our beginning accounts receivable, we'll just put it in here in the opening balance, was 10000 Then the way we're going to calculate the accounts receivable is, now this is uh, AR Collections. Let me quickly throw in a tab here. I'm just going to copy and paste these dates here. Let's create a new tab. And this is going to be monthly sales. All right, so let's say 10,000, 20,000, 25,000. Just throw in a few quick months there so you can see how this works when you're trying to anticipate what your actual accounts receivable balance is. Always good to name these tabs so you know exactly what you're looking at. So the January, any month's balance for that matter, should be equal to the previous month's accounts receivable plus the current month's sales. So if we're looking at January, we want to get January sales plus January sales minus back to collections. What do we expect to collect? It's the previous month's accounts receivable plus the current month's sales minus the current month's collections. What do we expect to collect this month? So now what happens is I had $10,000 in receivables. I had $10,000 in sales. That gets added into accounts receivable. I'm not anticipating collecting any receivables this month. So I end up with $20,000. Okay, might as well total up this to see what our total receivables were. Now I can copy this all the way across. And what it's going to do, as you'll see, is it's going to assume, again, we take the previous months, add in the current month's sales, and subtract the current month's collections, right? So we're, we're ramping up. We're adding to our accounts receivable. This is important because this is letting our cash flow model see that we're going to have this income. We're going to have these sales, but we're not going to collect it for a while, right? And of course, these current month sales, this is not a complete picture because these current month sales need to be, in effect, built in into the list in terms of, you know, where they go here. So I'm just doing this for quick purposes for, for you to see exactly how to start laying this kind of thing out. As always, I'm available for consult. If you need additional help with this, if you have questions, email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. Give me a call, 866-945-8070. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. Hi, this is Seth David from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're giving you an MS Excel tip on planning your accounts receivable
collections. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.